Hello, so with a new version of Bevy out, there's a new migration guide that I'm going to quickly go through and give my two cents on some of the things that I've noticed. And, you know, basically just for people that don't want to have to read through the whole documentation yourself, get an idea of what's in there. Uh, so we'll get started with the camera driven rendering. This is mostly a bunch of find and replace because they renamed the perspective camera default and now it's, you know, camera. 3D bundle default, and then there's the uh, orthographic camera was re uh, the new 2D is now just a camera 2D bundle, and then if you want to do an orthographic 3D, you need to spawn a 3D bundle and change its projection to orthographic and just put whatever appropriate settings. And now all cameras, not just the UI camera, will render the UI unless otherwise specified using the UI camera config here, like set false, and just insert that component will make the camera no longer render the UI and they've removed the default UI camera as a whole. Uh, there's a small error here in the, the log, but they've changed world to screen space to world to viewport and the parameters it takes are different. Here it shows just two parameters, but if I go back to the actual update log, they show that it used to take a whole bunch more parameters so that it could calculate and get the window size. Now that's all stored in the camera and it no longer needs that. Visibility inheritance, the change you need here is that if you have something that is visible underneath a parent, the root node needs to have visibility and compute visibility, which can be added with the visibility bundle. And it recommends that if you're using the transform bundle to swap to the spatial bundle, because that adds the transform bundle and the visibility bundle together. And if you want to check something's visibility, you use its computed visibility instead of its visibility and can check dot is visible. And there's other variables like uh, is visible in hierarchy and is visible like on screen. I think is visible viewport, which checks frost and culling, but not the uh, hierarchy. Uh, use the so they changed global transform to use um, Alpine, which is another way of storing uh, rotation and uh, and scale data as an array instead of as vectors, and they're basically saying that they replaced the translation with the translation getter uh, method. So you basically just have to find a replace and put parentheses on the end. It doesn't make much of a difference. And if you need access to the old style, you can use to, to scale rotation transform method. Uh, to spawn a scene, you now can have to use the, uh, you just insert a scene bundle into the uh, command instead of the spawn scene specific command this will then spawn the scene with this entity that is returned as if you were spawning any other bundle uh made scale mode more flexible not entirely sure in terms of what this is referring to but it talks about uh window size and allowing uh, to have fixed fix vertical fix horizontal so i think this is window resizing related i yeah uh allows for closing window is at runtime uh, yeah closing windows at runtime so they renamed the function that Bevy had that was, a, if you wanted to quickly prototype, they had a pre-built close on escape system and they've just renamed that and moved it into the Windows um, crate instead of into the input systems crate. And then they've changed close window to window close and it's basically just a, again, final replace, re-jig some systems. The run once is now uh, no non-manual system implementation, which is you've got to find all your uh, run criteria of run once, which is a really confusing sentence to say, which uh, now uh, is replaced with should run once instead uh, as the run criteria. Uh, system parameters have had their things renamed, their generics, so that they are avoid name collisions. I don't see where this has anything to do with the actual changes you need to make to your code after looking at it, but if you know about system parameters this is a section for you to read the link will be in the description tasks are no longer considered components and need to be wrapped inside a new type if you need to insert them onto as a component this is really simply done just you know new type struct wrap it around the the task and drive component on it it makes very little difference except that you need to again find and replace wherever you've got your task insert code and just replace it with the new type wrapping it. Uh, this is an interesting one for people that are using like bare metal bevy instead of just implementing the default plugins is that they've split the bevy 
time crate out of the core. So now if you're using time, timer, stopwatch, and fixed time step, they're all implemented inside Bevy time instead of Bevy core. And the more or less, it's just an extra import that you need to do. And this will allow for smaller code if you're using just core or to allow you to use time code with your, when you're not using Bevy core. So it's more about just making the engine more modular. They moved float ordering from Bevy core into Bevy utilities, which again, I believe is just about the fact that float core is not, uh, float ordering is not something you need in your core crate and is a utility that is used on the side. They moved reflect from uh, to Bevy UI and renamed it to UI reflect, uh, rect, which again, I think it's just, it's come out of core and gone in because it used to be used, used other places, but it's not. Uh, rename element state to button state. This not quite sure why they've done because I, like it makes sense when what the state is clicked, uh, hover and none, but I always thought it was interesting that you could hover over UI elements that weren't buttons and check to see their state, but they've changed that to now button state. Uh, they've done some doc improvements and renamed raw window window handles functions, which again, if you're using that, look into it more detail. It's uh. Ugh. Merged, uh, migrate to in case for Crevens. Okay. Uh, basically, use shader type instead of as std140 and uh, as std430. This is just about uh, how Rust packs the structs so that they can be used in shaders, and Bevy now has a shader type instead of needing to specify um, as standard. X and st or standard Y. Uh, and then there's just a lot more of like just storage buffers, removing and adding. Oh god, dog speaking menace. Um, uh, and then you just basically a lot of renaming and systems that if you need, you know, again linked in the description if you want to read in more detail. But it's just they added and removed a bunch of functions. Uh, Make pause timers update just finished on tick. This is really confusing to read. I'm assuming what they're saying is if you pause a a, um, a timer when it's just finished, it would always read that it had just finished despite not actually having just finished because you know, finished the previous one. Uh, and then they've also, in this second bit of text, saying that uh, timer's finished... Uh, oh, I've opened something. Time's finished uh, has been renamed to time's finished this tick which i believe is allows for really short timers to fire multiple times in a if if there's like a lag spike and a timer would have fired three or four times in the the frame pause it will now yeah, just that's the function you would use uh change default image filter to to linear uh which won't affect most people because most high resolution graphics you want linear anyway but now if you want to use like uh pixel art you need to uh insert either the default to nearest or on each individual image set its uh, image settings. Uh, it's filter mode to, to nearest. Uh, remove dot system, again, another find and replace where you basically just need to remove dot system from the end and systems now just go in without needing the dot system at the end, which has been the case for the last two versions of Rust, but now they've actually like removed it. It was deprecated in one, uh, 0 0.7. Uh, change the gamepad tuple to being a name struct instead. So instead of using dot zero and dot one, you use uh, dot gamepad and dot uh, type. I think uh, removed <coughs> the entity mute get unchecked, and now it's just get. I think this is because get does the same thing as unchecked, but checks it, and so there was no point having two systems for that when there's just unsound. But you know, why would you use unsafe code when there's a safe alternative that's the same? Uh, replace replace Read only fetch with read only world query. This uh, is very big section, so I'm not going to go into it. But it's a lot of just find and replace the name and a few like quick, uh, places where like it, you know remove unsafe and add unsafe because things have been renamed. So uh, fix soundness again. I don't know why this is in the update log because it it literally makes no requirement for the user to input anything. They're just saying that query um, conflicts have been fixed with or uh, any of and options in, in system parameters, so where you could query for a component if it existed, but otherwise it would still return. It would just give you none. Uh, remove the task pool parameter. This is something that you actually do need to, to check. Oh. 
if you're changing things is uh, when you were doing parallel iteration, you needed to provide a task pool. The task pool in version 0.8 has been made global uh, and statically accessed, which means that the uh, actual parameter uh, part for each will actually go and access it itself. So you no longer need to pass that in. It's just simply remove the task pool requirement from your system here, and also you don't need to pass it in. Uh, I actually made this joke in my <laughs> my uh, update video of 0 0.8 of being like, they changed it from U size to being U32, and I said it won't work on 16-bit. They won't even let you compile the 16-bit anymore. So if you were using a 16-bit platform, you can no longer compile. Uh, enforce type safety using uh, handle get means that you can no longer store handle IDs or a handle untyped for accessing assets anymore. You now require to store a typed handle. And a lot of handles, you know, you can just take the ID and convert to another type, but it's meaning that you have to explicitly convert between types. You can't just access an asset uh, arbitrarily because the handle actually stores the type ID internally. So even if you did that, it would still error. And it's, yeah, it's just about making sure that people don't, you know, shoot themselves in the foot by storing handle IDs and not actually the type that the handle represents. Uh, allow higher order systems is they moved a piece of private uh, API to being public to allow you to uh, implement your own systems. Uh, I think this is systems that implement systems, but I, again, I'm not really sure. It's just says it's less error prone and doesn't make any changes again for the user, which I don't know why is in the migration guide then, because it's saying that this is a p private API that's now been exposed publicly. so there's literally nobody would have access to that code um, on a developer level. Uh, added offset parameter to texture atlases, which is gonna be a pain in the ass to fix for people, is basically you just need to find and replace the from grid with padding and put a vec zero, a vec two zero at the end, which is just the offset from the corner that the mesh starts at, or the, the, the sprite sheet starts at. And this, yeah, it's, it's just hard to find because it's not it's not just a find and replace. You have to actively find and go to the end. Otherwise, you know, whatever name you have parameters. I guess you could use a regular expression. That would be a way to find and replace. Anyway, moving on. Uh, split mesh shader files, which if you're into shaders, this is something you should probably read, but it uh, just seems like a few renames and split things into smaller groups, uh, as I mentioned in my update video. So you'll need to import more specific things and th some things have been renamed. Uh, the camera-driven viewports has changed from being camera projection matrix to camera projection matrix with parentheses on the end. Just again, find and replace because all instances should be the same. Uh, the errors in the node graph have got a value added, so you have to expend your match nodes. This one's not that bad because unless you're using a um, catch-all at the end of your match node, uh, your compiler should be yelling at you at all the places where you just need to put a uh, missing input uh, court variant. Uh, made reflect uh, safe to implement. This section is actually missing something that it says reflect derive should not have any changes, which is not true because if you're reflecting uh, and deriving uh, serialize, you now need to import the uh, reflect serialize, whereas in previous versions you didn't. You only needed to ref import the deserialize. I learned this from porting my plugin, but it also made it safe, which means you more or less just remove the unsafe keyword and you have to change the names of any to as any and as mute and calls to, yeah, and any calls that you use to those need to be updated. Uh, they made the mutable API under ECS storage public crate, which it just says if this causes any issues, which again, they must have made it from public to public crate. Otherwise, why would it be in the migration guide? I'm not sure. Um, added global initialization and get um, accesses for the new type task pool. So basically, instead of including a resource asynchronous compute task pool in your system parameters, you now say let task pool equal asynchronous task pool get, and this will get the global access to the task pool. Uh, simple. Simplified the uh, design for labels, which instead of having boxed unsync labels, you should now replace all those instances with a label ID. And I don't think there's any other changes really. 
it's just that it's now that instead everywhere where you would have used a box label ID, now you use a system label. Move to uh, get short name from utilities to Bevy Reflect, uh, no, fr from Bevy Reflect into utilities, which again is about uh, compacting and simplifying what's in what crate. Uh, removed a dis dead system label marker struct. Uh, added reflection for resources, which really confusingly then immediately talks about adding components using reflect, but I believe that components can now be added and removed using reflection is what they're referring to. And you can do the same thing with components. Uh, make reflect partial equal return more accurate results. Basically, when you did a reflect partial equal, it would return some faults uh, when the comparison could not be comp performed, which uh, leads to confusing errors because instead of telling you that it failed, it tells you that they're not equal, which is not the same thing. So now it returns none if the comparison fails, not if the comparison is not equal. It's if something else goes wrong. Uh, render stage extract now runs on the render world instead of on the normal world. This won't make much of a difference. And if you're actively in the rendering thing, you should read this section. But it used to, commands would run on the world, the normal world instead of on the render world during the extract stage of that world. And they've changed that and updated it. Again, link in the description if you want to, if you're actually interacting with the render world and need more details. Uh, improved gamepad button detection is basically gamepads used the D-pad was considered both a button and an axis, and now it has been removed from our axis and is now just a button instead. Uh, change world position to being a vector is instead of using, if you were using set world mode uh, resolution and set resolution to dot, uh, logical resolution, instead of being a tuple of view size or a tuple of view, uh, F32, they're a U vector and a vector two respectively. Uh, full documentation for bevy assets. Uh, and they so they renamed get root path to get base path, and this is to remove confusion with the root path. And uh, basically, the distinction between the asset path, which is from your root path where the assets are located, and the actual path directory that the application is running in. So this just yeah it removes some confusion. Hierarchy's been changed, so you can no longer. Uh, access them directly they've been made private their fields so instead you need to replace parent dot uh replace parent dot zero with parent dot get replace child dot zero with unwrap the children so basically children is now just a wrapper around a vector so you dereference it and you'll get the array uh remove blanket serialized deserialized for reflect of generic types which is when you used to register types they would also register their reflect and uh, there, they would register their reflection serialize and reflection deserialize variants as well. Uh, for, this is for generic types. I believe it will still do it on non-generic types. I'm not entirely sure. But basically, for option vect and like hash map and that, it used to register their serialization to deserialization. Now you need to specifically do that manually. Uh, lighter no default features is they've removed assets and scenes from being default features. Again, they seem to be moving towards Bevy being as small as possible and less otherwise specified, which again, default features that they're, they're turned on. Like I believe that they're, they're, they're default features, but they're not enabled with the no default features uh, thing. So this means that if you're using bare bones Bevy, you will no longer get assets and scenes as a like mandatory enabled. Uh, improved ergonomics and reduced boilerplate around creating text elements is they basically uh, was re they renamed with section to from section and you no longer need a text align and if you do want to do text align you need to replace where you were using text align to the with text align uh, in instead uh, and then they added a query stage get single mute uncheck manual uh, and it's family which is just changed and also yeah, so they changed the system query single error to a query query single error. Uh, and they also, they tracing, tracing Tracy updated from 0 0.8 to 0 0.10. Uh, this requires Tracy version where when using the Tracy feature it is now 0 0.08. I don't really know if that, again, makes any difference as a migration feature. Outside of people that were directly using Tracy would have to then also migrate. Anyway, thank you for watching the video. Like, comment, subscribe. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, and I'll see you in the next episode.